Hey everyone, I'm Jensen. Thank you for joining me for some late afternoon tea. I have a few stories I want to touch on before we get into the main story this afternoon, but before we do any of that, let me show off what I'm munching on. Today I made these no-bake cookies from random items in my cupboard and they somehow turned out chocolatey and amazing. And I am again drinking coffee from Maddie and Bella, but I did add hot chocolate this time because I am wild and out of control. But that is enough of that. Let's get into the news. A bit of good news on the coronavirus front. You can finally show grandma just how tall you've gotten in person. Nursing homes are officially able to open for outdoor visitation today, July 20th. For months now, visitors have had to communicate by phone or through glass, but families can finally get that necessary face-to-face -face interaction at nursing homes. Ohio Governor Mike DeWine said that as these facilities begin assessing their own readiness for this reopening, they should consider case status in the surrounding community as well as in the nursing home, staffing levels, access to adequate testing for both residents and staff, personal protective equipment supplies, and local hospital capacity. But not all nursing homes will be able to do this right away, so make sure to call your specific facility to see what their plans are before you go visit. And I know us young people, we hate making phone calls, but come on, suck it up and do it for granny. She deserves it. And strap yourselves in, Ohioans. As some restrictions like nursing homes are loosening up, others could be moving on in. Governor Mike DeWine said on Meet the Press Sunday that new orders are probably coming our way this week. Now, he made these comments while discussing a conversation he had with health departments about where the virus is spreading, which included bars, churches, and from people traveling out of state. But really, he said a lot of it is just people in casual settings of 20, 30, 50 people gathering together. And look, could he and maybe I be jealous that we're not getting invited? Yeah. But the idea isn't to go narking on people's parties. DeWine has repeatedly said that the goal is never to get people in trouble, but to get them to stop horsing around and understand the situation that we all find ourselves in. And while we don't know what orders will be issued, DeWine has said that a statewide mask mandate isn't out of the question eventually. But honestly, we have no idea what he's going to say. Look, we all got jazzed up for his Wednesday chit chat and all we got was a primetime lecture. It's like, okay, fine, sure, I'll wear a mask, dad. But on to our main story for the afternoon, what the polls are going to look like in the midst of a pandemic. A few Ohio counties will be hosting a special election on August 4th, including Wood and Hancock locally. But this is something we should all pay attention to because these counties seem to be using it as a trial for the big November election. So what will the election look like? Both Hancock and Wood have similar procedures in place with no real surprises on the horizon. Poll workers will be provided with PPE and given ample time for breaks so they can get some fresh air. Voters will also be asked to wear masks if possible, although people won't be turned away if they aren't wearing one. People will be asked to keep six feet of distance while waiting in line, and of course, a number of cleaning protocols will be in place, like wiping down the machines between each use and having hand sanitizer and hand wipes readily available. You know the drill. It's the same thing when you go to Walmart or Chipotle or wherever else you might enjoy waiting in line. But what about those polling locations used by high-risk populations? The August election is small, so it isn't much of an issue right now. But come November, Secretary of State Frank LaRose is calling on counties to relocate polling spots at places like nursing homes and healthcare facilities, pointing toward places like schools instead. But this also means that residents of these facilities might not have the same voting options that they're used to, and it's up to each county's Board of Elections to address these concerns in the best ways for their community. But let's say you're immunocompromised, or maybe you just don't feel comfortable voting in person in the middle of a pandemic. What then? Well, you can always vote absentee. The term mail-in voting has become more popular during the pandemic, but really, it's just the same thing as sending in an absentee ballot, which people have already been doing for years. Here's how it works. First, you need to request your absentee ballot, go to the Vote Ohio website, print off your ballot request, fill out the form, sign it, and send it off to your local county board of elections. Then, you have to wait. And when you finally get that fresh, hot ballot in your mailbox, what do you do? Well, by golly, you fill that out and you mail it in too. Groundbreaking. But say you're a procrastinator like myself or just don't feel like blowing money on stamps, most Board of Elections have a drop box outside where you can just place your ballot in. But say you are going to go the mail-in route. There are some things that you should know. The return envelope with your ballot tucked inside must be received by the Board of Elections by 7.30 p.m. on Election Day or postmarked by the day before Election Day. 
If you postmarked it for the day before, it has to get there no later than 10 days after the election. So if you want your vote counted, make sure you knock this out right away. But for those of you in Wooden Hancock, what are you even voting on? Both issues have to do with schools. Finley has a levy on the runway and Bowling Green Schools has eight initiatives to transfer territory from its district to other school districts, which is a whole nother can of worms we can crack open another time. But that is all I have for you today. I have links for more information on all the stories I touched on today in the description of this video, including the recipe to my randomly delicious cabinet cookies. But if you enjoyed this and you wanna keep on sipping tea with me, go ahead and hit that like button hit subscribe, you know the drill. But with all of that, I hope you go out there, make informed decisions, and I'll see you next time.